Hey, I'm Rob from Medusa Tech, and in this movie, I'm going to show you just a few tools from Sonic Fraction's collection of 16 Max for Live devices, Tricky Traps, which includes a bunch of highly usable MIDI sequences, audio processors, instruments, and lots more, for providing both traditional and more obscure methods for creating musical parts. Plus, many of the devices feature customized push integration, allowing you to control them from the large grid of pads. So let's get started with a new project and go straight to the Tricky Traps pack. I'm going to create a few chains of devices to try and show you as many of the tools as possible in this video. Beginning with a MIDI effect then, I'll choose Ripple, which is a pretty unique one. Then we'll need an instrument for it to play, so I'll go for Transpot, and lastly an audio effect to process it, and we'll use Sequence Mod for that. Starting with Ripple then, what we have is a grid here on which we can place a trigger. And then when we hit play, you can see how it creates a pulse, which then ripples out across the grid. It doesn't make any sound however until notes are placed on the grid, which is done by clicking the note button and then turning on notes above. I'm just going to change the scale to C minor first. You get all of the scales that are normally available in live to choose from. The lowest root note can be found in the bottom left corner. And then you've got guitar string intervals, so fourths going up the left side, and the notes in the scale along the bottom and then various notes from the scale elsewhere on the grid, which get higher from left to right and as you go up. Where it gets interesting though is when you add a retrig, which is one or more yellow pulses that are generated by the main blue one. These need to be placed within the range of the blue pulse to have an effect, but once they're creating a ripple, that ripple can extend to more remote notes as you can see. And the rate can of course be changed, as well as the pattern lengthened to extend or create gaps in it. And if you want to adjust the start position, then you can use the offset dial to shift that. So it's a really interesting and easy way of making rhythmic parts that's got a nice organic feel to it. As far as Transpot goes, you've got an oscillator engine with all the basic waveforms from sine to sawtooth, then 25 different complex ones in the waveform section. So you can choose the ones you want and then blend between them with the slider using the transpose buttons to re-pitch either waveform if you like. And there's a simple low-pass filter section, with an adjustable decay envelope for creating classic filtered trance style patches. As well as delay and reverb effects on the end. So although there aren't that many controls to tweak, you do have very usable ones and can easily get a load of appealing sounds out of it. Then Sequence Mod is a step sequencer, which can be used to modulate any parameter in live, which is pretty awesome. So we could, for example, map it to the cutoff on Transpot to create some movement there. The range of modulation is set with the slider at the end. Then you can change the level of steps and rate of the pattern to suit. We could also leave Transpot's filter alone and instead add Auto Filter and modulate the frequency of that instead. And we can do some other cool things like have the direction of the pattern change and add some glide to smooth the modulation out. And you can create a total of 8 pages, so up to 64 steps if you want to create a more varied pattern. And if you have push, you can select it as a controller and then click on the device header to do all of this from the hardware. So that's a pretty cool melodic part made. Now for some drums, we could take a look at Radar, which is a circular sequencer, which is becoming a more popular way to sequence things these days. And we could use it to trigger Syndrum, which contains a load of analogue drum sounds recorded from a large modular synth rack. If you're not familiar with a circular sequencer, then you have different lanes here, each with their own colour. So we start off with red in the middle, which, as we only have four steps, is ideal for a kick. I'm going to tweak sounds as I go, so bring down the decay to tighten the kick. And also tune it. Then, drum 2 can trigger our offbeat hat. So I'll turn on every other step as it's got an eighth note or quaver rhythm. 
and again I'll tweak the sound. And so on with the other sequences. And although I'm sticking to the default sequencer settings here, you can change the rate and direction of each sequence if you like. And if you want to use radar to control a drum rack, then it's also great at that, especially as you can easily set the MIDI note of each sequence and mute and solo them to quickly choose the drums you want to trigger. So it's a pretty unique way to program drum racks, especially if you're using push. Moving on, we've got Ripcord, which is a chord generator and arpeggiator. So a pretty powerful tool that if I add Ambin after, which is a nice mellow instrument, you can hear what it can do. So at the moment, the chord generator and arpeggiator are on and the synth has loads of effects, so just holding one key creates a massive wall of sound. If I turn off the ARP for a minute, and also lower the effects, so the chord generator allows you to pick a scale, so let's stay in C minor, then you can hear we get triads created on each note. And you can try out some different chord types if you want to stray outside of the scale. or stay in key but use the inversion buttons, which are handy ones. These rearrange the chord so you don't end up with the same note at the bottom, if you want to create a slightly different sound or higher overall register. Then turning the art back on, you've got options for level, length and octave of notes, which I could adjust manually, or use the randomize buttons, which is the question marks that you see dotted about, to see what it comes up with. Of course, there are a number of presets available, which are combinations of devices set up for certain purposes, which you can find in the Sounds folder. So we could maybe add a baseline to our project now by checking out one of these. I think I'll go for this Hammer one. So this is using 4Play, which is a straight up step sequencer with a grid of MIDI notes here, which you can set to a scale and then add steps to play an instrument and this is being used to trigger 808 bass, which is a really fat, boomy bass generator. Great for saturated, subby sounds. And I couldn't really not mention Glitch Thing, as this is a really cool instrument for creating effects, background fillers, or those random quirky sounds that make a track more interesting. It's loaded with tons of different glitchy samples, which you can trigger with any of the MIDI sequences, or just by playing notes yourself and then adjusting the XY pad to mess up the sound. Playing with the decay and transpose amounts too. I may as well trigger it with this last MIDI sequencer, as we've not seen that yet. ISO up is maybe the craziest of the sequences, so it's quite suitable for this. With this one, you just turn on a lane to create a random arpeggiator pattern, defined by the key and rhythmic settings, but with a sequence of arbitrary notes which you can make more complex by adding additional lanes with different speeds. In this instance though, we're not too worried about melodic content. And there are still two other audio effects devices and loads of instruments that I've not gone into, all with more presets too. So it's a pretty extensive collection in which you'll easily find plenty of things to inspire and assist you, as well as show you new and fun ways to make musical parts. For more info, check the PAX page on the Plugin Boutique website. See you next time. Thank you.